finally, I'm going to talk about a concept. It's a little bit uh, hard to understand, but for people who study metals, especially metals, this is a very important uh, concept called uh, constitutional supercooling. Hmm. Supercooling means what? The liquid is higher, it's higher temperature than solid or lower temperature than solid. Lower temperature than solid. That's what we mean super cooling. Otherwise, we call it superheating, right? Which means liquid is hotter than than solid. Super cooling is the liquid temperature is lower than solid temperature, but constitutional. Constitutional means what? Constitute something related to so-called composition. So this is a phenomenon that people related to supercooling, but this supercooling is related to composition, constitution, something constitute together. The supercooling is related to composition. Okay, so when we have something like this, we have, let's look at here, T for temperature horizontal let's say just the uh, position I have one side left side solid right side liquid let's just say okay I have temperature axis I have solid on the left liquid on the right and this black solid line indicates the so-called the temperature gradient within the solid okay the this black line represents temperature gradient within the solid and then this one this is well in the solid in the liquid or at the interface at the interface between solid and the liquid, right at the interface between solid and liquid. And uh, we are doing this for a pure element or alloy. Alloy, we are doing this for alloy. And uh, let's say it somehow reaches so-called a steady state, which means my local temperature would be just this one. It will be the lowest point for my system composition. This will be my interface temperature okay and it's liquid uh, on the right side then let's just think okay solid on left uh, liquid on right at the interface okay what's my interface temperature i said it's t3 which is this guy make sense okay and then we're doing with a pure element or alloy we're doing a alloy because we are dealing with an alloy and this side right side we said is liquid or solid liquid and deep within deep within the liquid what's the composition well we are assuming, okay, we are not doing stirring. So deep within the liquid, the composition most likely be somewhere close to the X0 for initial composition. Make sense? Deep within the liquid, the composition is X0. Deep within the liquid, the composition is X0. What's the composition right at the interface? Do you see it is this guy? when the interface temperature is here, the interface composition within the liquid would just be X0 divided by K. And what is K? Greater than one or smaller than one? K is XS divided by XL. It's typically smaller than, in this case, one. So X0 divided by K is greater than what? 
x0 divided by k is greater than x0. It will show it's this peak, right? So we said deep within the liquid, the composition is xl. At the interface, the composition is x0 divided by k. So within this liquid, do you see this green line represent kind of the concentration profile within the liquid? Make sense? This green line represents the concentration profile. Make sense? But let me ask you this. We said deep within the liquid, the composition is x, x0, right? I should remove this xl, uh, x0. For a liquid with x0 composition, what's the equilibrium melting point? It will be T1, right? For a liquid with this composition locally here, it is at uh, T1 that starts to form the first bit of what? Solid. Make sense? You see what I mean? On the other hand, if within the liquid I'm this composition, what's the melting point, the equilibrium melting point? It's what? If my local composition is this guy, which is this guy, what's the equilibrium melting point for that liquid? It's T3. Means what? At T3, it's going to form solid. Make sense? So the consequence would be, you, you think of this, within the liquid there will be change in what? Composition. Within the liquid there will be change in composition. Because of this change in composition, within the liquid, look at this green line, green dash line. That represents so-called EQ. I mean, it's not E, EQ. T for temperature. EQ means so, quote unquote, equilibrium temperature but at a different location because at a different location I have different what composition I have different composition which means I have corresponding different uh, equilibrium temperature make sense within right side is all liquid within the liquid I have change in composition with location because of this change in composition in location i would have also change in corresponding corresponding dashed equilibrium temperature at this point the equilibrium temperature is this guy remember this is vertical vertical scale is for temperature and here my composition is x0, my equilibrium temperature becomes T1. Make sense? So this so-called green line represents, it's a hypothetical line that represents the so-called quote-unquote, say to yourself, the so-called quote-unquote hypothetical equilibrium temperature for each of the locations hypothetical equilibrium time for each of the location then it comes okay the so-called uh, what's your actual temperature let's say somehow you can measure you can put a thermal couple you can deep a thermal couple into the liquid you can in reality you can measure what temperature profile and what you may find is sometimes your temperature profile goes into this region do you see what I mean? Temperature profile is steep, it's higher. But sometimes you may be a little bit less steep, a shallower like this. You, do you see what I mean? Sometimes you may be like this, sometimes may, you may be like this. But there will be consequence. If your actual temperature you measure it's this temperature for this location, it's what? Compared with your equilibrium, temperature is what? Higher or lower? 
higher. If your measure temperature is higher than your so-called quote-unquote equilibrium for this local location, that will be like grows into so-called uh, superheated case. That means it will be planar interface. If I have local temperature gradient like this, very steep, I would have so-called a planar interface. My solid uh, would grow uniformly, move at the same speed. On the other hand, if my local temperature is here, something like this, my measure temperature is below the dashed line. Remember the dashed line is hypothetical equilibrium. If my real temperature measured, you'd use a small carbon dipped in there to measure temperature, is lower than this dashed line, means what? At that local location, the equilibrium, the, the real temperature, the liquid, is lower than what? Equilibrium. But it's still higher than what? This temperature, remember, the solid is which side, left or right? Left. This temperature is still higher than what? Any temperature within the solid. Do you see what I mean? Within the liquid, if you locally probe a temperature, let's say this deep, as what I'm pointing, the local temperature is higher than solid, but, but it's lower than my local quote-unquote equilibrium temperature. This is what people say it will have so-called uh, dendritic structure because it's lower than so-called uh, equilibrium temperature. It's uh, super cooling. It's lower than equilibrium temperature. It will be so-called super cooling for this location. That would lead to so-called uh, dendritic growth. So put another way, in so-called, you may ask, oh, Dr. Chen, where did you observe the dendritic growth? It's much easier much, much easier if your system is not pure. We would have so-called uh, constitutional supercooling, which means locally at this location, although my liquid is still hotter than solid, but my real temperature is below the equilibrium temperature. That equilibrium temperature is determined by what? determined by local concentration. That's why we call it constitutional supercooling. It's a supercooling. It's below the equilibrium melting point, not because it's lower than this side, but because due to the local composition, due to the constitution, it's lower than the equilibrium. And this would give the so-called dendritic structure, highly gross dendritic structure. That's quite often people observe, how people observe all those things. And that's quite often it's also very bad for mechanical property for the for the alloys. Okay. Or people also observe some of this probably for polymer system. Constitutional supercooling. It's a supercooling, which means your local temperature is below the equilibrium. Local temperature is below the equilibrium. But now because the local liquid temperature is lower than solid, it's lower than your quote unquote supposed equilibrium because your local composition is this guy. Your local composition is this guy. This, let's say your local composition is this guy. corresponds to this melting temperature, equilibrium melting, but your reality, your measure is lower than this. That gives you so-called uh, constitutional supercooling, and that gives you the dendritic, highly dendritic growth. That's much more easier to observe than really cool a pure, highly pure solid into supercooled region, which is very difficult to do. This one, you don't need the liquid temperature to be lower than solid. You have to think, how do you extract and make the liquid temperature lower than solid? Because it's the solid side you are extracting heat away. It's difficult.
But because of this composition change, now you can have still local real temperature to be lower than the so-called quote-unquote equilibrium temperature. And that will make it to grow in a dendritic fashion. Makes your microstructure terrible. Makes your mechanical property terrible. Okay? So,